Now we're going to go through how to use Bridge to import your photographs as opposed to using something like iPhoto or Image Capture which doesn't allow you to do much sorting and organizing. Um, Bridge allows you to sort, organize, label, convert, batch rename, all sorts of cool stuff. So I plugged my camera in to the little cord and then to the back of the computer and you'll see that iPhoto opens automatically. You need to shut it down. I don't care if you force quit it. I don't care what you do. As long as you get that completely shut down. Do not fall into it. Force quit. Up here in Bridge, back in normal reason land, you've got this little icon with the camera and downward pointing arrow. Get photos from camera. And you can change it in your com home computer. Do you want photo downloader to automatically launch whenever a camera or card reader is connected? I'm going to say OK, and then that'll override the iPhoto. Down in the bottom bar, you'll see it opens up Photo Downloader. And in this case, I need to go to my device, which is the Rebel. This is the uh, uh, normal standard dialog box. And I'm just going to show you a couple of things I think are really important. One is the location. It will put it in the picture folder with a bunch of subfolders. And that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. I'm going to put it on the desktop. I'm going to name the folder last name underscore project 3 and hit create and then put my images on there. At home if you have like a hard drive that you have all your photographs on you can direct it there just make sure that you set the location or it will default to somewhere maybe the last time someone used it and you may not be able to find your images. I also don't create subfolders. Um, when I shoot and import, it's typically event by event, and I work that way instead of day by day. We are not going to rename the files right now. Open Adobe Bridge, and did you shoot any raw files? Um, I don't even know. Like, okay, we'll hit convert to DNG just in case you did. What that will do is take a .cr2, which is the Canon raw file and convert it to .dng, which is Adobe's digital negative. The advantage of doing this is that when you edit the file, the additional XMP file, which is all of your metadata and all of the changes you make, is not a separate file. It stays with the DNG. And we'll get into that as we go on, but if you have a raw file, you do want to convert it to DNG. If you want to hit advanced dialog, you can pick certain images and not certain images. Do you want to get all 67? Uh, yeah. All right. So we're good. Location. No subfolders. We're going to rename them later. It doesn't look like you shot any raw files, but if you did, it would convert it to DNG. So let's say get media. <laughs> this is perfect. I mean, we just want some fun. Whoa. <laughs> I don't have any breakdancing photographs. Mm -hmm. Oh, I will by Tuesday, though. That's right. Yeah. No, I won't. I think those aren't videos, too, so maybe, like, not the very last one as well. Let's see. It's already importing, so we'll give it a minute. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the MOV file. doing its thing. While it's doing its thing, maybe we could, let's see, do we have a picture of Walter we could look at while it's doing its thing? Oh, that's pretty good. Let's see, is it still doing its thing? <laughs> ah, it's almost done doing its thing. Okay, we'll just look for another second. Oh, it's pretty cute. I'll have those ready from now on. What about if we have the, the JPEG? I mean, we can, open, we can still open them on the... Uh, uh, Camera Raw? Right? Absolutely. You have a couple less files, and you, you want to make sure that in your camera, you're not applying saturation, vibrance, black and white, any creative effects in camera, because they will be stuck to that file. 
All right, just gonna take another minute and perfect. It will open a bridge dialog window. I'm gonna go to the filter here on the left hand side and I'm going to select QuickTime videos. And in this case, I'm gonna delete them because we're not gonna be working with that. And so I'm just gonna toss those out. And then if you look for file type, we just have JPEGs. And these are all of our JPEGs. Cool, so under filter, if you had raw and JPEG, you could just select one or the other. You, If you do shoot both a raw and a JPEG file, you want to just edit the raw, not the JPEG. Right? If you just have JPEG, go with it. Now we need to name these because you're never gonna say, oh, remember that one awesome picture? IMG underscore 1010, never gonna say it. <laughs> edit, select all, tools, batch rename. You are given four fields by default. First thing you want to do is get rid of two of them. Now, was there was this a certain event? No, uh, there were different days, both of them. One was an event and one was just like a regular day. So maybe you can just put weekend. Weekend. Or July weekend. Absolutely. Weekend. For that uh, text, di uh, text perfect. You want to change the second field to preserved file name, and then from name to number suffix. And you're doing that because when you when you go to work, you may be in one neighborhood for half of them, maybe another hit neighborhood for half of them, you know. And you might need to say, okay, for these numbers from 10:05 to 10:15, I'm here. And then you have these notes to reference back. If you don't keep this number suffix, you will. You, you can lose like organization. When I did that photo project where I shot like 5,000 photographs, <laughs> the first thousand or so, I just put on the talent release, blue earrings, right? And then everybody that day would wear blue earrings. Mm -hmm. So the, I could match the name with the number suffix and help me put together an organizational system, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why this is my suggestion on how to name it. You'll look up the weekend number suffix. You could even put fourth weekend in there. You want to use underscores and that'll be your, that'll be, let's see if we can do, might even be simpler to put July 4 like that. And then shorter tells you about the event, tells you the number suffix, and then you hit rename and they're all renamed. Okay. So they're perfect. They are on your desktop in a folder with your name they are all renamed. Now, if you have a hard drive where you keep all of your images to, I have an external. I would copy this to my external and then work off of the images on the desktop. Um, I don't like to work off the originals. But right now, the next thing we're going to do is go through how to sort these and label them.